Hello everyone and welcome to Children's Storytime. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Today's book is called Fearless. When a new baby is born, it's difficult to tell if it will grow up to be big or small or brave or scared of the dark and spiders. So sometimes babies get the wrong name. There are lots of people called Bruce who should probably be called Julian. There are even some people called Bruce who should be called Beryl, and others who should be called Fido. It's the same with dogs. So when the Claiborne Wilmans, who should have been called the Smiths, got fearless as a little puppy, it seemed a good name for him. Except Fearless wasn't. If a car backfired in the street, so did Fearless. House training was hard for Fearless. Bulldogs have big heads, but most of it is very thick bone. They can run into walls and hardly notice, but inside the thick bone there isn't much room for a brain. So Fearless had a terrible time understanding why it was all right to go on the grass, which his dad spent hours mowing, and not on the carpet, which his dad took no notice of at all. He was very careful not to go on the newspapers his mom left lying on the kitchen floor at night, in case she wanted to read them. He might have had a tiny nervous brain, but he had a huge heart and loved everyone. He even loved the vet who stuck needles in him. He loved the vet so much he once licked her contact lens out. After that, the vet always wore glasses when Fearless went to see her. Best of all, Fearless loved children, especially the small one that crawled around the floor, around on the floor. She loved Fearless too because when she tried to give her dolls a biscuit, nothing happened. But when she gave one to Fearless, he looked very happy and ate it. Fearless knew that it was his job to protect his family from all the frightening things in the world and be brave even when he wasn't. There were scary things everywhere. Whenever Mrs. Jones came to the house, a dangerous black handbag used to follow her and sit on the floor by her chair. Fearless would back away growling until his mom trapped the handbag under a cushion. He had to keep his eye on the broom too, because once, when he went into the laundry, it fell on him and tried to bite him. And as for the stairs, he just didn't want to think about them. He tried to climb them when he had been a puppy. They had tripped him up and made him fall down on his head. Freelis was as soft as custard and wouldn't hurt a fly. Except when he sat on one once and squashed it. But people who didn't know him used, him used to cross the road because they thought he wanted to bite them. When he was really just smiling, hello. And then one night, Freelis lived up to his name. Everyone had gone to bed and forgotten to lock the back door. Freelis was lying in his bed by the fridge, watching the moonlight crawl across his dinner bowl, when somebody opened the door and came into the house. It wasn't one of his friends. It was a man in a funny hat that covered half of half his face. Fearless stood up and wagged his tail as the man picked up his mom's handbag. Hello, Fearless said in his friendliest voice. The man stopped. He looked at Fearless, said a rude word, and jumped onto the table. You're not supposed to put your feet on the table, said Fearless. But the man just heard big dark barks and looked scared. Fearless's dad heard the big barks too and came downstairs. Look, look, dad, that naughty man's got his feet on the table. Fearless shouted and he tried to jump and pull the man's shoelaces. The man leapt in the air, dropped the handbag, and ran out the door. Rude man, said Fearless to himself. He didn't even say goodbye. Who's a big, brave, fearless dog then? Said his dad as he patted Fearless on the head and gave him a piece of cheese. Is that a trick question? Thought Fearless as he went back to sleep. The next day, his mom bought him a huge bone. Which looked so fright frightening, Fearless had to bury it in the garden. The end. Thank you for watching.